I think we lost him. But we can't stay here very long. We gotta move. Chris, we gotta move. He's gonna chase us until we're dead. He's not gonna stop. Chris, the only thing that matters right now is that we get as far away from here as we possibly can. Do you understand me? Chris, do you understand me? Okay. Okay, let's go. You're not going anywhere. Go, before Dimitri gets here. Go, before I change my mind. Come with us. I can't. He'll kill me. But you have a chance now. Go. Go. Enemy! Who are you talking to? Oh, uh, nobody. I heard something. Oh, that was just an alley cat. <laughs> you telling me the truth? I would never lie to you, Dimitri. No, I think you got a soft spot for those two misfits. My loyalty's to you. Better be. The boss, you see him? No. We gotta catch him before they take off. Let's move. No, I'm good. Thanks. If you haven't noticed, you're in the middle of nowhere, pal. Yeah, no, I noticed that. No, I mean you no harm. My name's Chester. This here is Mac. And that goofy-looking fella in the back, that's Blake. We work on a ranch not too far from here. Good for you. Not too friendly, are you? No, I'm not. Well, the man we work for tends to have a little bit of a soft spot for lost souls. So if you need the work, Sure love the help. So you can get in with us, or keep on walking. All right. All right what? I'll come with you. Good choice. Hop in the back. Hey. I ain't goofy looking. Yeah, I keep telling yourself that. <laughs> Whatever. Why are we giving this loser a ride anyway? We got enough people working on the ranch as it is. That's not for you to decide. Besides, you know we need an extra hand since Bobby went back to prison.
Okay, it's your turn to seek. I'll hide. Why do I always seek? When do I get to hide? When I say you can. I don't think the rules work like that, but I'll go with it. Okay, cover your eyes and start counting. No peeking. I said no peeking. All right. One, two, three. Come on, I'm gonna introduce you to somebody. Well, it's about time. Yeah, I had to pick up a stray on the side of the road. We're not even seeking! You're behind the white shed! How did you know that? I've got eyes behind the back of my head. I see everything. <gasps> you do? Yes, everything. Your mom just got back from her tray ride. Why don't you go help her with the horse? Okay, but next time, no cheating. Okay. What's your name? My name is Thomas, sir. Thomas Kincaid. Lucky. I help the owners run things around here. You're in luck. We're down the man. Do you have experience working on the ranch? Yes, sir. Good. Pay is $15 an hour plus breakfast and lunch. Sounds more than fair to me. We'll call it a trial run and see how you do before we bring you on full time. I'll show you around and then we'll put you to work. I appreciate the opportunity. Say, so what kind of hat is that? I think it's called a bucket hat. Yeah, we'll throw it in the fire. A hat like that doesn't belong on the ranch. Follow me. What are we doing trusting this guy? We know nothing about him. Ah, uh, he seems nice enough. Besides, you were a stray once, remember? Well, I don't like him. OK, well, you don't know him, so just give him a chance. You're right, Blake. No one knew you. Found out you had a record longer than my arm. <laughs> now you're on the straight and narrow, for the most part. Let's keep it that way. I still don't like him. Well, I don't care much what you like. Let's get to work. Let's go. Hey there, Joss. How was your ride? Oh, it was so good. There's a new guy. Hmm. OK. Well, I made some breakfast burritos. Can you go help me pass them out while I get Ember cleaned up? Sure, Mommy. Come back when you're done, OK? OK, Mommy. Here's one for you, Lucky, and here's one for you. Wait, what's your name? My name is Thomas. Well, it's nice to meet you. My name's Jocelyn. It's nice to meet you, too. I gotta go help my mommy with the horse. Bye. Bye. Why aren't you working with Thomas today? Start over there where the fence needs repair. Got it. I want you two to start cleaning out the horse stalls. Why do I always have to clean out the horse stalls? Because you're the one who always needs it. Now hop to it. Right behind you. I'll check on you later. I'm going to be doing some repairs at the barn. I'm assuming you know how to drive stick? Nope. Never really learned. All right, well, I'll teach you sometime. That truck I picked you up in, it's Lucky's truck. It lets us use it on the ranch and carpool to and from work. Cool. Hey, I want to say thank you for you picking me up off the side of the road. I could <laughs> really use this job. Uh, don't thank me yet. I don't even know if you can hack it. Let's keep going. Okay. Hey, Chester, you think you can muster up enough strength to go get some more wire? We're going to need more for the other side. Think you'd be all right without a babysitter? <laughs> I think I'll manage. All right. Howdy, partner. Hey, I thought we might come on over here and lend you a hand. Thanks. I could use all the help I can get. You know, on second thought, I thought we might just take ourselves a little break here and watch you sweat like a pig. I'll give you a hand. No, no, Mac. No, 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 no. Let him do it by himself. He's tough. He can handle it. Hey, what's your problem, man? You. You're my problem. See, I don't like you. I don't like the fact that you're here. And I certainly don't like that stupid hat sitting on top of your head. Well, why don't you do something about it? Whoa, whoa, whoa you guys, calm down. You're going to get us in trouble. Well, keep him on a leash. Uh. Uh. You're going to pay for that. That's enough. A couple of tough guys, huh? 
You look like preschoolers rolling around the sandbox. Well, he done started it. Is that true, Mac? Sorry, I'm gonna stay out of this one. I told you to keep an eye on him. He didn't do anything wrong. He was just going to go get some more wire for the fence. We need more for the other side. Is that true, Chester? Yes, ma'am. If Thomas and Chester were fixing the fence, what were you two doing up here? We was just coming up to help out after we cleaned out the horse stalls, and this guy just flipped out. Well, you're off to a good start. You're not going to last here long if you have a habit of starting fights. What happened? Grace, I done told you what happened. He threw the first punch. What was I supposed she to say? She ain't sit there talking to you, is she? You two can leave. Your part here is done. I'm Grace. My father owns this ranch and I run it. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, I was fixing the fence and those two showed up. Mac was willing to help. Blake started a fight and I gave him one. I should have turned the other cheek. I'm sorry. I'll be on my way. Hey, not so fast. Blake's a known troublemaker, so uh, I'll give you a benefit of the doubt. I appreciate your honesty. You can continue working, and we'll let you know what we decide on whether or not we're going to keep you once I have a chance to think about it. Fair enough. Should have kept a better eye on him until he proved himself. What do you think we should do? Well, for Blake, I think it should be a final warning and a first warning for Thomas, and uh, give him shoveling duty in the horse stalls for about two weeks. Sounds good. And uh, I want you to run a background check, see if he's got a criminal record. OK, you got it. Isn't that your favorite? It's both of our favorites. All right. Now I remember. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Try a bite. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's like a burst of heaven in my mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How are you feeling today, Daddy? I have been feeling a little tired, but I'm OK. Dr. Christensen is making a house call this afternoon to go over the results of the CT scan with me. Everything will be okay, don't worry. You have a ranch to run. You focus on that, not on me. It's easier said than done, Daddy. Okay, I worry about you. I know you do. How's your eyesight? Are you still able to see the words when you read? Or? Not anymore. Not even with my glasses on. I can help with that. We'll see. Look, Grace, I'm sorry I haven't been much help around here lately. Being in this house all day is just eating me alive. I just haven't been feeling up to par these days. It's OK, Daddy. Okay, I've got everything under control. Yes, you do. And I'm very proud of you. You've done a great job, but it's a lot to handle all by yourself. Well, Lucky does a good job of helping me out. I know he does. But I would like you to meet somebody before I leave. Somebody special. 
Okay, don't talk like that. You're not going anywhere. We all have to go at some point. My dream is that you will meet a good man that will treat you and Joss like the treasures you are. I know, Daddy. I know. So we got a new worker. <sighs> what do you know about him? Not much. They picked him up off the side of the road, and he already got into a scrap with Blake. That's not surprising. <laughs> yeah. Lucky's gonna do a background check, but I don't, I don't think he'll last long. You never know. It's our job to give everybody a chance to prove themselves. We've seen miracles on this ranch. We just have to exercise a little faith. You're absolutely right, Daddy. You always are. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. <sighs> I think you just might be the best little chef in the whole world. Thanks, Grandpa. I know I am. Three <laughs> <laughs> more pieces! Three more! Still! Still three or four! Hey, Josiah. Come on in, Doc. Workers let me in. It's OK. Have a seat. I know that house calls are a thing of the past, so thank you for coming. Well, anything for you, Josiah. How, how you feeling? I've been better, Doc. What'd you find out? I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you, my friend. OK. What is it? You've got cancer, Josiah. There's a large number of tumors lining your intestines. Is it treatable? There's the option of chemo or radiation. But I don't know if it'll do any good, and it might just make you sicker. If we'd caught it in time, we might have been able to surgically remove it. But it's attached itself to your intestines in other areas. And at this stage, the usual treatments likely won't cure the cancer. I see. What can I do? There's treatments that can help with the pain. Maybe extend your life a little bit longer. How much longer? Six months, if you're lucky. Maybe less than two. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm sorry, Josiah. I, I really am. Maybe we should see another doctor and get a second opinion. There's no need. I trust my old friend. He's the best there is. We still have a little time. I want to make the most of it with you. This is going to crush Jocelyn. How do I even tell her? When the time is right, you'll know. I'm not ready to say goodbye to him. <laughs> I'm 
gonna call it a night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Would somebody please tell the boss? I'm good. Have a good night, Lucky. All right, who's gonna do it? Do what? Somebody's gotta let the boss know we're going home for the night. Can't someone just call him? In case you haven't noticed, dummy, we don't get any service out here. Hey, I did it last time, so. I did. No, you didn't, I did. Fine, I'll do it. All right, Thomas, go on. So can I just go inside? Yeah. Hey, are you sure I can just go in? Oh, yeah. Everybody does it all the time. Now go inside, make a right. At the kitchen, make a left. Go down the hall, and his room's on the right. Can't miss it. Sucker. <laughs> I'm born every minute. <laughs> you are so messed up. Now we're just having fun at all. Mr. Rogers? Um, Mr. Rogers, I was just coming in to tell you. Who the hell are you? And what are you doing in my house? Uh, I, was, I was just coming to, 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 uh, the, the, the door was open. And, and you think you can just walk into someone's room? Yeah, no, 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 not, I, I was just, I was told to tell you. Told that, what? To tell you that we're, we're heading out for the day. We're, we're, fin we're finished. Where's Grace? She handles all of that now. I'm not sure where she is, sir. I'm sorry I bothered you. You didn't answer my question. Who are you? My name is Thomas, sir. You must be the new guy. I heard you like getting in scraps. No, sir, I don't. Good. I don't want to hear about any more fights on my ranch. Do you understand? Yes, sir, I understand. You can go now. Mr. Rogers? What now? Uh, I was just curious. What book are you reading? I'm not. My reading sight is gone. It's all just a big blur. But if you must know, it's called the Book of Mormon. Why? I've just always enjoyed reading. I've never heard of that book before. It's scripture. It's my favorite book on Earth. Sounds interesting. Well, uh, good night, Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry once again. Good night. Uh, Mr. Rogers? What? Um, I could read that to you, if you'd like. What? Yeah, I could read it to you. Wouldn't be a problem. I know I'm not off to the greatest start here, but the offer stands. Have a good night, Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah. Joke's on me. 
Jokes on Thomas. Still can't believe you fell for it. <laughs> and then the old man, oh, he must have been mad. He hates when people come in his house on another. Hey, what are you doing in my house? <laughs> yeah, I'll be surprised if you last a week at this point. <laughs> Shut up, Blake. Nobody asked you. Blake. Thanks for the ride, Chester. No problem. I'll be at uh, 6 in the morning if you need us. All right. Have a good one, Bucket Hat. Hey, uh, I will. <laughs> Thanks. You guys have a good night. You too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you're home. I was about to start beating my head against the wall for my own amusement. How'd it go? Went good. Found work on a ranch. Decent pay. That's good. We were starting to run out of money. Yeah. So, when can I get a job, start work? I mean, I need to start pitching in and doing my part. I think it'd be best if you just lay low for a while. Dimitri isn't going to find us here. We have no idea where he has his people. For all we know, we could be living right next door to someone on his payroll. Doesn't that mean that you should be laying low too? I mean, we are twins after all. That's why I'm working on a ranch, Chris. There's nobody out there. It's safe for now. Well, maybe I could work on the ranch. With your bad back, you wouldn't last a day. When things start to simmer down, you can look for something. Trust me on this. I do. I trust you, Thomas. One way or another, we're going to carve out a life for ourselves. Pass me the remote. Forecast, plenty of sunshine through today with seasonal temperature. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Please make my grandpa feel better and bless all the horses, my mommy my, and my grandma. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Okay, off to bed. Just checking on you, Daddy. You need anything? No, I'm fine. Thank you, though. Where's Joss? I just put to bed. But knowing her, she'll be running down here in a minute or two. She can be impossible sometimes. Strong-spirited, like your mother. You know, that new guy walked into this room tonight, uninvited. Are you kidding? I'm starting to wonder if giving him a chance was a good idea. I've dealt with this and workers that I've hired in the past. Sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. But I think we should give him one more chance. OK, but only because you say so. I think we should. You know, he made me an offer tonight. Really? What was it? To read the Book of Mormon to me. He saw me struggling to see the words. I told you there's an app that I can download on your phone for that. I can barely see my phone. And besides, your mother used to read to me every night, and it just wouldn't be the same. I could read it to you. You're too busy, Grace. And besides, you hardly have enough energy to stay awake at night after work as it is. I think you should spend every spare moment you have with your daughter. Grandpa! I never got to say goodnight. Oh. Good night, sweet pea. I love you. What is it? Are you OK? Uh, your grandpa hasn't been feeling very well lately. But don't you worry, none. Everything's going to be fine. OK, grandpa. <sighs> Let's get you back to bed, young lady. OK, mommy. 
Love you, Grandpa. I love you. I love you. Good night. Don't you have somewhere else to be? Cramp in my style. Look, Blake, I don't like you, and heaven knows you don't like me. But we're stuck with each other, so why don't we make the best of this situation by not talking? You ever heard the term, snitches get stitches? Yeah. Shut up and go back to work. So what's Josiah's story? He used to own a multi-million dollar marketing firm, and then retired here to live a simple life and help others out. Complete strangers like you and I. He's a good man, a little honorary, but good nonetheless. And Grace, Grace is his daughter. Yeah, I figured as much. She sure is a pretty thing, isn't she? Quick as a whip, and that daughter of hers, she's just precious as can be. Hey, don't even think about going there. She's mine. I got my eye on her. Yeah, I keep dreaming. Yeah, you keep laughing. You'll see. I'm going to marry Grace someday, and then I'm going to take all of Josiah's money. You're a real piece of work, Blake. You'll get yours when the time is right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to oh, it. Oh, I'm sure you are. Not another word. Thomas, boss wants to see you. Did he tell you what it's about? No, he just told me to come get you. Hop in, I'll give you a ride. Here, it's a lucky picture I colored for you. You need it. Thanks, Joss. You're welcome. Excuse me, sir. Come on in. You wanted to see me, sir? <sighs> I did. Thank you for coming. Yeah, sure. Uh, was there something I can do for you? Maybe. Truth is, you caught me off guard yesterday. No, yeah, uh, the guy said that it would be okay for me to come in here. Once again, I'm so sorry. It sounds like you were the victim of a childish prank, but that's not what I was referring to. It wasn't? No, it wasn't. I've been thinking about your offer. Oh. And? And I want to take you up on it. Really? That's not what you were expecting, is it? <laughs> no, honestly, sir, I thought I was being brought in here to be fired. No, you're not being fired. Okay. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I, I really need this job. So when would you like to get started with reading? This evening, one hour before you're finished for the day. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, that works for me. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I guess I'll see you later. I'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> Work, leave it alone. 
Don't want to rush your heart Don't want to push too hard Cause I like where we are Beautiful horse Hold a horse? Yes. Care bread? Say you're familiar with horses. Yeah. I've been around them a lot on various ranches I've worked on. You right? A little. Out of practice, so it's been a while. Well, maybe we could go for a trail ride sometime. Country or home. Yeah. I like that. Thank you. I'm not saying that it isn't, but if this, if this ain't love, it's the best I've never been in. I have seen fires burn too hot and fast, <laughs> turn right into ash, they were never built to last. So we've been taking our sweet time And baby, I don't mind Cause I want to get this out Come on guys, let's get these pallets done so we can clean out the horse stalls I need to go see the boss if that's okay with you Yeah, it's okay, I'm worried of your situation Okay, thanks Lucky We still have an hour of work left, why does he get to leave? Mind your own business this isn't fair. You know he's just going to kiss up to Mr. Rogers so he can date his daughter. I've seen the way he looks at her. No, Blake, that's you. Everyone has seen the way you look at her, and it's not going to happen. But get back to work and clean out the horse stalls. Come in. Are you ready for me, sir? Right on time. Have a seat. Okay, thank you. You don't need to thank me. I appreciate your coming. Yeah. Before we get started, there are a couple of things I want to make clear. Okay, yeah, shoot. First, I don't want you making fun of anything that's in here. This book has changed my life in more ways than you can count. You may not agree with everything we read. You may not even like it, but I won't have it being disrespected. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Next, I don't want you asking questions unless you are being sincere. I will have no debates. Understood? Understood. We will read one hour a night. You can leave with everyone else. I know the crew likes to carpool. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Let's get started. Okay, sounds good. Uh, okay. How do I read this thing? Top to bottom, left to right. Okay, yeah, but do I read Straight across, or? You read each column as though it was its own page. Top to bottom, left to right. Got it. So, can I start now? Yes, please, go ahead. Yeah, okay, cool, sounds good. I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents, uh, therefore, I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, said unto my father, I will go and do the things which the Lord hath commanded. For I know that the Lord giveth no commandments unto the children of men, save he shall prepare a way for them that they may accomplish the thing which he commandeth them. Okay, so. Let me get this straight. This guy, Lehi, takes his entire family and leaves everything behind. His gold, his silver, his home, everything. And now his son is just going to- Yes, going to get the plates of brass because they were told to do so. Right, but why would anyone leave their entire life behind? It doesn't make any sense. It makes perfect sense. The great city of Jerusalem was going to be destroyed because the people want to repent and listen to the prophets. 
they sought to take away their lives. Yeah, but leaving behind everything you worked so hard for, just, it's just stupid if you ask me. I didn't ask you. What did I say when you began? Right, no debates, but... But nothing. I'm sorry, I, I'm just gonna keep on. No, we're done for the day. But my shift isn't over yet, sir. I'm cutting a short. Get out. Okay, well, here's your book. What are you doing? Don't just throw it around like it's a sack of potatoes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean any disrespect. Didn't your parents teach you to take care of other people's things? No. As a matter of fact, they didn't. They weren't around to teach me that one. Not that you care, but me and my brother were raised in the foster care system. I had no idea. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Grace. I just wanted to thank you for taking your time to read to my father. I know it means a lot to him. Yeah, it's no problem. I'm happy to help. He can be a bit ornery at times. I heard him snap at you. Yeah, well, I came back a little harsh myself. Good. He needs someone to stand up to him every now and then. <laughs> he hasn't quite been the same since losing my mom. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's been rough. But once you get to know him underneath, you'll realize he's just a big teddy bear with a heart of gold. Yeah, I can see that. Hey, I wanted to apologize for starting off on the wrong foot. I really am just here to work hard, keep my nose clean. I appreciate your apology. And hopefully this will all work out. Yeah, hopefully it does. We should probably get going. We'll see you. Well, look who it is. Making friends with the boss, I see. I guess. Decide wanted me to read to him. Oh, ain't that sweet. Not tonight, Blake. I'm not in the mood. What, you think kissing up to the boss makes you any better than us? What a joke. You're phonier than a $3 bill. Yeah, back off, Blake. Get in and walk. I got a shotgun. Nope. You're in the back. Thomas, you're up front. Let's go. Well, his background check came back okay. I think he's a good worker, and he seems to have his head on straight. But Blake's the problem. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep an eye on him. I'm gonna turn in. You have a good night, Lucky. Okay, you too. Thanks for the ride, Chester, but I think I'll be driving myself from now on. But I get the feeling that we're not going to see you again. Not so sure. Take care. Didn't we find this guy on the side of the road? We know we did. It's a reciprocal question, Mac. You mean rhetorical. It means when you ask a question without producing an effect or making a statement, rather than elicit information. Whatever. You know what I meant. You ain't that smart. Smarter than you? Maybe by an inch. Besides, my point was, why wasn't he driving his own car then? I don't know, but I agree with Chester. I don't, 
I don't think we'll be seeing him again. Well, all I got to say to that is good riddance. <laughs> good riddance. It is funny. Very it is funny. Idiots. <laughs> Stupid. Hey. Woo! Nope. Nope. Whoa. A rough day? Yeah, you could say that. You want to talk about it? No, I don't. OK. The only time I've ever seen you this upset is when somebody brings up our past. Yeah. You want a PB and J? No, I don't want a P. How many of those have you had today? I don't know, like seven or eight. Oh, jeez. Are you sure you don't want one? I cut the crust off just like Mom never made. Nice, Chris. No, I don't want a PB and J. Fine. I quit. I'm not going back. Well, that's not like you, Thomas. You're not a quitter. Hey, whatever's eating you, you can't let it beat you. Yeah, maybe you're right. If I do decide to go back, I'm going to need to use the beater. Where'd you park that thing anyway? I hit it around back. Why do you need it? I promised the owner that I would read to him for an hour a day at the end of my shift. I might be a little bit longer, and the guys like the carpool, and I don't want to hold anyone up. I thought you said you didn't want to drive that thing around town in, in case Dimitri or one of his guys notices it. Yeah, I'm just going to be driving it to and from work. It's nothing to worry about. Let's hope so. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want one? Uh, Chris, I do not want a PB&J. OK, all right, fine. More for me? <laughs> Hey, at least we still have each other. Yeah. Yes, sir, we do. OK, guys, come on, let's go. Breakfast is over. We got to fix the fence out, the outer perimeter, some of the cows are getting out. Veronica. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, look at that thing. City boy coming back. And he's still rocking that bucket hat. Oh, God. Well, didn't think we'd ever see you again. Glad you're back. Thanks, Chester. That car needs to be put out of its misery. What a hunk of junk. Get to work. All right, boys. Mac, you ride shotgun. Blake, get in the back. Really? Again? Yeah, right where you belong. Huh? bit of a fixture upper, but I see the potential. Thank you. I think it's a classic. Thomas, you're back. Of course I'm back. Well, Chester said you weren't coming back. No way. I'd miss you too much. I missed you too. Morning, Grace. Morning. You missed breakfast. Are you hungry? I am, actually. Well, I make a mean biscuits and gravy. I'll fix you up a plate. Just come in when you're done. Sounds good. Much obliged. Thomas, do you like my mommy? <laughs> I do. There's nothing not to like. <laughs> I know it. Get in here, young lady. Hi, mommy. Now I don't know the rumors you came back. Oh, come on. There's nothing going on there. Mm -hmm, sure there's not. Anyways, I could help you fix that thing up, get it running right. I'd appreciate it. Thanks, Chester. You have a price. OK. What? You have to learn how to drive stick. No problem. Time to get to work. Yeah. Not you. We're roughing that. Word to the wise. I don't know what you got going with Grace and her daughter, but tread lightly. The last guy is a grade-A loser, hasn't even seen his daughter once. And we're all very protective. I'll be sure to keep that in mind. I certainly hope so. 
Eat quickly. We got a lot of work to do. Hey, Jocelyn. What's wrong, Miss? Looks like you two are having some fun up there. Yep, we sure are. Want to watch us walk in circles? Yes, definitely. Oh, by the way, I loved the biscuits and gravy that you made for me earlier. Thank you so much. You are very welcome. So I was thinking of going on a trail ride tomorrow, if you'd like to join. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you. Let's go. <laughs> that all about? Just leave it alone. That's not a business. Getting really sick of this guy. We're over here working on the truck, working on the ranch, and he's over there hanging out with the horses and flirting with Grace. What's going on over here? You tell me. I can't do anything about that. Grace doesn't want him over there. She'll let him know. It's so unfair. You're in thin ice, Blake. I don't want to hear another word about this. Now get back to work. Should get the mouth shut. <laughs> Mr. Rogers? <sighs> Mr. Rogers, are you okay? I'm fine. Must have been something I ate. Well, let me help you up. No, I'm fine. Okay, well, I mean, can I get you a glass of water or no, something? No, no, it's, it's, everything's fine. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, I'm sure. I'm fine. Thank okay. you. No problem. I didn't think you were coming back. Well, we had an agreement. One hour a day. You're a man of your word. I respect that. I'm sorry about yesterday. I was out of line. I'm sorry too. So, clean slate? Yes, I'd like that. Where were we? <clears throat> First Nephi. Chapter 3, verse 8. Got it. Are you sure you're okay, sir? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. And it came to pass that when my father had heard these words, he was exceedingly glad, for he knew that I had been blessed of the Lord. And I, Nephi, and my brethren, took our journey in the wilderness with our tents to go up to the land of Jerusalem. Do ye not remember the things which the Lord hath said? If ye will not harden your hearts and ask me in faith, believing that ye shall receive with diligence in keeping my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you. Behold, I say unto you that the house of Israel was compared unto the olive tree. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Louis. Yeah. Boss going home. Hey. Hey. Um, can you take a little break? I think so. You want to go for a horseback ride today? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, horseback ride. Come on, back to work. Let's go. Behold, my beloved brethren, remember the words of your God, 
pray unto him continually by day, and give thanks unto his holy name by night. Let your hearts rejoice. Angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, wherefore they speak the words of Christ. Wherefore, I said unto you, feast upon the words of Christ, for behold, the words of Christ will tell you all things what ye should do. Hey, Mr. Rogers, mm -hmm. this book talks a lot about Jesus Christ, but I'm still not sure why. It's because he's the Son of God the savior of the world. Okay. They crucified him because he taught the truth. But he rose again in the third day and he promised us eternal life if we would follow him. He called 12 apostles to carry on his work and document their experiences that became the New Testament. And eventually, all of those apostles were killed. And some of the most plain and precious truths were lost. After his resurrection and ascension into heaven, he came back and visited his people on this, the American continent, and he chose 12 new apostles. In this sacred book, the Lord restores all of those plain and precious truths so that we can return home again. And all because he loves us. The scriptures teach us that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, will the truth of God's word be established. The Book of Mormon stands as a second witness of Jesus Christ and a companion to the Bible. That's a lot to take in, sir. One step at a time. Perhaps you should pray about it. Never really been a praying man, sir. Never really tried. Maybe it's time you did. There's something else I'd like to discuss with you. Okay. What is it? I noticed that you've been spending a lot of time lately with my daughter and granddaughter. Yeah. They're incredible people, sir. I've really enjoyed getting to know them, just as I've enjoyed getting to know you. That's very kind of you. But they've been through a lot, and I'm very protective of them. As well you should be, sir. I would never do anything to harm them in any way. I know you wouldn't. That's why you're still here. Just wanted you to know where I stand. Duly noted, sir. You may continue. Wherefore, now after I have spoken these words, if ye cannot understand them, it will be because ye ask not. I can't get over how beautiful it is up here. The stars are so close, you can almost reach out and touch them. Yeah. I feel so lucky to live here and raise my daughter in such a beautiful environment. Yeah. You know, your dad was asking about us the other day. I want to let you know how much respect I have for you and Jocelyn. I hope I'm not overstaying my welcome. Not at all. I love your company. I, um, I haven't 
met anyone quite like you, Thomas. You have a good heart. I've never met anyone like you. Hey, Chester, how goes it? Pretty good. This must be your brother. I'm Chester. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Chris. Did Thomas tell you about our agreement? Sure did. I'm gonna bring this clunker back to life. Yeah, something like that. More importantly, he's gonna learn how to drive stick. I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's pop the hood, see what's under it. This thing is sad. Just like that dumb hat you usually wear. That's a hat. You guys keep pulling that, I'll start calling you surround sound. Very funny. <laughs> so how much do you think you'll have done by Sunday? Uh, it'll be done by then. Awesome. Any chance you can give us a ride back? Yeah, I got a lot of work to do. Now you can take the bus. It's about a mile down the road on the left. OK. Thanks again, Chester. Yeah, no problem. See you Sunday. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Thanks for letting me come with you. I was starting to feel so cooped up. Sure thing, buddy. I think it's safe for you to come out just a little bit more often. Just be cautious. I will. So do you want to go to the bar and grab a drink? I could use one. No, not this time, bro. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> That's strange. I've never seen you turn down a trip to the bar before. Yeah, it's just something that I read in the book that Josiah has me reading to him. Kind of got me thinking it isn't such a good idea. That's interesting. Well, I'm all for positive change. Do you want to go to the gas station and grab a soda then? Yeah, sure. I'm up for that. Oh, yes. Less time in the dungeon. <laughs> Please, have Get your hands off of me. Okay, I hear I you. am not a bank. You pay me by Tuesday or we're going to have big problems. OK, yes, I will pay you. I will pay you double, OK? As soon as I get all of the money. Shut up. with you later. Well, I just need something to get. Else. You're not going to believe who I'm looking at right now. Hey, sweetheart. Let me help you, Daddy. I'm OK. Just let me know, and I can bring whatever you need up to your room. I'm not dead yet. Don't say that. How's Thomas doing these days? Great. This past month has gone by without a slip, and he seems to be getting into the groove of things. I'm glad to hear that. He's a good man. Yeah, I like him. I've noticed you have my approval. <laughs> what can I get for you, Daddy? There's something I need to talk to you about. Sure. What is it? What's this? It's the deed to my ranch and all of the land. It's over 10,000 acres. Um. Do we, do we have to do this now? Yes. We have to do it now. It's also my last will and testament and all the codes and numbers to my bank account. It's everything I own. <laughs> and it's now yours and Jocelyn's. Oh, Daddy. 
I'm not very good at this emotional stuff. I wish your mother was here to help me through it all. I'm going to be seeing her soon. But then I'm going to miss you and Josh. I am so torn. So am I. We'll all be together again someday. That's right. Forever. I don't know how people get through this life without knowing that. I love you, Daddy. I know you do. And I love you, too. My foot's off the brake. It should be on the gas. Well, where's my other foot supposed the to be? The clutch. Oh. No, I thought my foot was on the clutch. Which one's the clutch again? The, the one that's not the brake. Well, what do you keep pressing? OK, well, check. where's my other foot supposed to be? Oh. I thought that was the clutch. This is the no. clutch. No, no, don't. That one's the clutch. Oops. <sighs> you just get out. OK, I'm getting <sighs> out. Lucky lets us drive this truck. If he knows that we were. What are you two boneheads doing to my truck? <laughs> Sorry, Lucky. Oh, jeez. What are you laughing at? You're the one who's going to be fixing it. No, I'm not. Want to bet? Hey, in trouble? <laughs> That's right. Wait, they really are in there getting real trouble? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Thomas broke Lucky's truck. It was, it was like, it broke down. It was so funny. You, sh you shouldn't have seen it. Really? <laughs> oh, well, maybe you better get going, Peanut. <laughs> Hugs. Oh. Okay. Bye. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Thomas. Bye, Jocelyn. She ratted me out, didn't she? Yeah, she did. So you broke Lucky's truck, huh? I don't want to talk about it. I think that makes you a truck killer. <laughs> not sure if that's a serious sin or not. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Can we please start reading now? I'm ready. OK, cool, cool. Mosiah, chapter 7. Before we begin, though, there's something I've been curious about. OK, shoot. Why did my men find you on the side of the road? Where were you going? Where were you coming from? I was just looking for a job. I needed a fresh start. So you were running from something. What happened? I just trusted the wrong people. Hmm. Want to talk about it? Not really. Maybe another time. Fair enough. Let's read. And now it came to pass that after King Mosiah had had continual peace for the space of three years, he was desirous to know concerning the people who went up to dwell in the land of Lehi-Nephi, or in the city of Lehi-Nephi. For his people had heard nothing from them from the time they had left the land of Zarahemla. For I say unto you that whatsoever is good cometh from God. OK. It's kind of like a score. Yeah, right? For sure. There you go, back back. Eye on the ball. Got it! Yes! Yes! You got it! <laughs> oh Lord, my heart is exceedingly sorrowful. Wilt thou comfort my soul in Christ? O oh Lord, wilt thou grant unto me that I may have strength, that I may suffer with patience these afflictions which shall come upon me. Mr. Rogers, are you okay?
Yes, I'm okay. You can keep reading. Okay. Because of the iniquity of this people, O Lord, wilt thou comfort my soul and give unto me success? Wow. Where did you learn how to shoot like that? My father. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. Do not suppose, because it has been spoken concerning restoration, that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. Behold, I say unto you, wickedness never was happiness. That makes sense. I've always felt that way, you know? Like, every time I did something wrong, I knew it, and it never felt right. That's called a conscience, Thomas. We all have one. I've also heard it referred to as the light of Christ. The light of Christ. I like that. You're learning fast. I think it's time you went to church with this and saw all of this for yourself. We actually have a small branch that meets back here on a ranch every Sunday. No, Joe, I'm not going to church. I don't even have a suit. Besides, I don't belong. You do belong. I can loan you a suit. You don't have to wear it. You can come as you are. But we would love to have you there. I'm not going, Joe. You can't convince me. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I'm just putting it out there. But the offer stands. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we could come to church today. We thank thee for thy son and for his atonement. We once again thank thee for our many blessings, and please bless us that we can have thy Holy Spirit here with us today. We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the end of the bird, Thomas. So does that mean I can unfold my arms and open my eyes now? Yes. Yes. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I feel so out of place. I'd like to start out by saying thank you for being here today. Fact, you I look quite you. nice in my old suit. And I'd like to welcome you to the very handsome. worship with us on such a... It's yours. Day. We're going to start by taking the sacrament. And then I'm going to share my own personal testimony with you. Hey. After that... What's a testimony? And open it up it's a sacred belief like that invite all of people you hold close to their hearts, it's usually about the gospel. To do so at that, time. that sounds interesting. It can be, although sometimes people just get up there because they like to talk. <laughs> Let's start by singing hymn number 196. What's the sacrament? I'll explain it later. testimony of the gospel here on the earth that it was restored I have a testimony in the Book of Mormon that it is a testament to his teachings public speaking doesn't come naturally to me but this has been the hardest year of my life 
He was always there with me, directing me to live my life in a way in which I could meet her. I want you to know that I believe in Christ. My testimony is simple. It's that I know that uh, Jesus Christ lives. I like to bear with God. My brothers and sisters. I'm happy to be here today. I'm an old man in the sunset years of my life. I've learned a few things in my life. I have learned that there's nothing more important than our families. I have learned that Jesus Christ lives. I know him. And I know that he knows me and that he loves me. I love you all. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It was really nice meeting you, Thomas. Hope to see you again soon. I think you just might. And you have our number if you change your mind about the lessons. I do. You guys take care. I'll see you next week, Bishop. It was really good to see you, Josiah. We're here if you need us. Will do. You too. It's great to see you. It's good to see you too. Thank you. You're welcome to join us anytime, Thomas. It's a pleasure meeting you. It's a pleasure meeting you too. Thank you. Well, what did you think? I really enjoyed it. I feel like I learned a lot. Thanks for inviting me, Jos. We're glad you came. You're always welcome. But I think I'm going to go lay down for a little bit. I'm feeling a little tired. I'll see you tomorrow, Thomas. Bright and early. Mm -hmm. Grace. Bye, Peanut. Bye, Grandpa. See you later, Jess. I could give you a ride to your apartment if you'd like. Thank you. Can I go to Mommy? Not this time. I need you to help me with Grandpa, okay? Okay, Mommy. Bye, Thomas. It was nice for you to come to church with us today. Definitely. See you later, Jocelyn. Bye. Bye. You ready? I am. Lead the way. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is a beautiful day. What was that one we were trying to say earlier? It was a yeah, exactly, for sure. <laughs> Thanks for the ride. You're welcome. I'm glad you came to church with us today. I hope we didn't freak you out too much. No, no, not at all. I actually really enjoyed it. It was very touching hearing everyone share their... What do they call them? Uh, testimonies? Testimonies, yeah, especially Josiah. His, you know, really touched me. Yeah. I love hearing what he has to share. Yeah. So we have Sunday dinners, and I make a really good pot roast, if you'd like to join. Yeah, I'd really like that. Great, I'll pick you up. OK, cool. I'll see you later, Grace. See ya. I can't say I didn't get a few weird looks, but for the most part, they were really cool. A lot of them welcomed me and everything. Wow. I thought churchgoers were just a bunch of judgmental snobs. No, no, this is different. How so? I can't quite put my finger on it. It's just different. The things that I'm learning just feel right, you know? It's hard to explain. 
I was planning on going next Sunday. You should come. I'm good. Well, come on. I think you'd really like it. I plan on taking some lessons from missionaries and everything. Thomas, you seem all into this and all. I'm just not. You haven't even given it a shot. I'm not interested. If you go with me, then we'll get you out of the house. Besides, I want you to meet everyone. I appreciate what you're trying to do here, Thomas. But I'm just not into it. What am I trying to do? Convert me. Hey, <laughs> you'd make a great missionary. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to do. I just don't want to go through this alone. And I thought you might want to give it a try. Well, I don't. But I'm glad you do. That was the best pot roast I've ever had. <laughs> I think I had like four servings. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Grace. I've been meaning to ask you something. Sure, what is it? It's concerning Joe's. I've noticed that he hasn't been feeling well and he's been getting weaker. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. It's none of my business. No. Um, you need to know. Know what? He's sick, Thomas. How sick? He has stage four cancer. It's terminal and um, he doesn't have long. I'm sorry, Grace. I don't know what to say. I love Josiah. He's become like a father to me. I can only imagine what you're going through. I'm just trying to get through it one day at a time. I'm here for you and Jocelyn. Anything you need. That means a lot. More than you know. Please don't tell him I told you. He doesn't want anybody's pity. He just wants to go quietly back home without a fuss. I'm not ready for him to go. Me either. I'm all in. I'm out. Call. Too rich for my blood. Show him. Ace is full. Boss, we need to talk. As you can plainly see, I'm in the middle of a game. I know, boss, but I have information regarding the twins. Do tell. One of our guys in Utah spotted him in some podunk town outside Heber. <laughs> well, well, well. Looks like we're going to Utah. <laughs> to Utah. You can go. Read him and weep. No, there's no way in hell you didn't cheat. I'm done playing. Sit down! We're done when I say we're done.
I don't know about this, Chester. I'm pretty sure we put Lucky on his final nerve last time. You don't worry about him. Now just put your foot on the clutch and shift the truck into gear. Now remember, this has to be smooth. So as you're pressing on the clutch about halfway, shift the truck into first, put your foot on the gas. Do not put your foot on the brake. OK. Can you shift it for me again? Nope. This one's all you this time. <sighs> OK. Okay, I think I got it. 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 Oh yeah. Perfect. We got it. Yeah. We got it. All right. We got it. All right. I, I knew, knew you I had it. Yeah, I knew you got it. I knew oh you had my it. gosh, yes. Yes, I can't believe I got it. Thank right. you so much, Chester. Well not go faster. No, I don't think I'm gonna go any faster, but this is good. I think this is good. All right. Okay. We know. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm very grateful for you, Joe. You've given me a job and a place where I feel welcome. I've never had that before. I wish I had you for a father growing up. Well, you do now. You'd make a fine son. Yea, they had been taught by their mothers that if they did not doubt, God would deliver them. And they rehearsed unto me the words of their mother, saying, We do not doubt. Our mothers knew it, and they had been taught by their mothers. That must have been nice. I'm a good listener. What's on your mind? I told you I was an orphan once, Jose, but I never went into any detail. I never had a mom or a dad growing up. And every foster parent I had treated me and my brother like garbage. We were always a burden, constantly beat down and abused. I'm sure that must have been very difficult for the both of you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. We only ever had each other, you know? We never had any examples to look up to or people to teach us right from wrong. We just had the friends that we thought we had, and they always tended to show us the wrong way of going about things. Do you know why we're here? Why don't you tell me? We're on the run. My brother joined this group, so I joined them too. They had us convinced that there was some kind of a brotherhood, that, that they helped people. Then things started to change. Little by little, we started to learn their secrets. It started with small stuff, you know, stealing, gambling. We wanted out. But the leader, Dimitri, said that he would hunt down or kill anyone who tried to leave the group. I don't want to do this anymore, Dimitri. You lied to us. I didn't lie! I just didn't divulge all the information. We simply provide a service. By dealing drugs and stealing things that don't belong to us? We want out! There is no out. You try and run, I will hunt you down like an animal until you are six feet under. Just let him go, Dimitri. They're not going to go to the police. Get up! Listen, I don't trust anyone. You leave her out of this. Let me be very clear. You are stuck with me. I'm like a bad disease. You never be rid of me. Because I'm all you got. We couldn't escape. The leader started to get more and more violent with people. Before we knew it, he was handing Chris a gun. Right after he had just recorded someone being killed on his phone. He witnessed an actual murder. And we both did. 
We were scared to death. We didn't know what to do. The next day, the leader told Chris that it was his turn. His turn for what? That it was his turn to kill someone who had owed them money on a drug deal. It was our last test to see if we really wanted to be part of their family. But neither of us could take a life. So we ran. Did you ever go to the police? No. We were too scared. There was a friend that we had inside of the group that we thought we could trust, so we turned to him. As soon as Chris showed him the video, he said our secret was safe with him and that he would turn into the police. That night, we had Dimitri breaking down our door and shooting at us. The video was erased. We were betrayed. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about this sooner, Jess. If you want me to leave, I'll understand. Look at me, Thomas. I am not gonna turn you away. You and your brother were just looking for a place to call home, to belong. There is no way you could have known how, how those things would happen. I don't want anything to happen to you, or Jocelyn, or Grace, or anyone who works on this ranch for that matter. Nothing's going to happen. How far did you run? We came from Texas. Well, nobody's gonna look this far. You're out in the middle of nowhere. You're safe. You don't know these people, Chos. They don't know me, and they don't know the people that work here. Trust me, Thomas, you're safe here. Thank you, Chos. I can never repay you for all that you've done for me. This is your family now. Do you understand me? It came to pass that I did return with my 2,000 against these Lamanites. Thank you for being so honest. I wanted you to know everything. I already told your father. And I'll understand if you want to call things off. We all have a past, Thomas. We all deserve second chances. I admire your courage. That must have been so scary for you and your brother, leaving knowing that you could be killed. Yeah, thank you for understanding. We felt trapped for so long. We're still scared for our lives. You're safe here. Hey! 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 I thought you were supposed to be getting ready for bed, young lady. I know, but we forgot to give Thomas his presents. That's right, we did. Here you go. For me? Yep, for you. Now take the old hat off and put it on. Okay. Yeah, now you look like you belong on a ranch. <laughs> you won't be needing this one anymore. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I love that hat. Thomas. What? I know you love that hat, but it's pretty ugly and nobody else liked it. Really? Yep, really. I'm going to bed now. Good night. Good night. <laughs>
That is one special little girl. Yeah, I'm pretty fond of her myself. I'm glad you think so, too. I do. And I'll treat her like a queen, just like I will her mother. Would you like add blue, light pink, purple, hot pink? Could I have the purple? Sure. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Mmm. Here you go. Thank you. Could I have some cream? Sure. Okay, how many scoops? Just one. Okay. Am I interrupting? Not at all. We were just finishing up our little tea party. Right, Sweet Pea? Right. Mm. Nice cowboy hat. Thanks. It's a gift from Grace and Jocelyn. Well, it's better than the last one. Told you. Well, I better get going. OK. Thank you. Bye, Grandpa. Bye, Thomas. Bye, Jocelyn. My Sweet Pea. So precious. That's right. Handle with care. Always. So shall we get started? That's why you're here. Where were we when you left off last? Moroni, chapter 10, verse 4. That's one of my favorite verses. We're at the end of the book. I want to tell you that I've enjoyed every second of this, Thomas. Thank you. No, thank you, sir. It's been an honor. And when ye shall receive these things, I would exhort you that you would ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true, and if ye shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, he will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why you made that rule, isn't it? Only sincere questions. That's right. When you ask sincere questions, you get real answers. I'm gonna have to give that a try tonight when my knees hit the ground but I'm pretty sure I already know what the answer is. I knew there was something special about you when you walked through those doors. Maddie used to read that book to me before we went to bed at night. You brought back cherished memories. You don't really talk about it very much. It's difficult. She was my world. Do you mind if I ask what happened? She died from early onset Alzheimer's disease. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. What was she like? She was incredible. Everybody that came in contact with her went away happy. She just had that effect on people. She had a smile that could light up the dark ages and shared it with everybody. At night, after we would read, 
we would watch her favorite television show and she would write in her diary. She loved to write. After she passed away, I had found her diary. And on the last page, she had written a message to me. In the end, she didn't even know who I was anymore. It was hard to watch her fade away. All I think about now is how lonely she must have been before she died. She knows you loved her, Joss. There's something else I need to talk to you about. I know you know that I've been sick, but I don't think you know how sick I've been. Grace already told me. I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so very sorry. Me too. When we get back, I'm gonna beat Chad within an inch of his life. Send us on a wild goose chase. It's not my fault, the guys you can trust. No one asked you. I'll take care of him. Get home. You've had enough? Says who? You're not taking another drop. I'm taking you home. Well, I'm ready to talk to Grace anyway. It's time she knows what's up. So what, you're gonna show up to the house drunk? Mr. Rogers is gonna shoot you. Mr. Rogers, old man Rogers, have you seen him? He, he's about to croak, I ain't scared. And another thing, Thomas ain't half the man I am. I don't know what Grace sees in him. She should be mine. You know it, I know it. Everyone at the ranch knows it. And you can keep dreaming, buddy. Thomas is a nice guy, leave it alone. Thomas is a total loser. Hey. Are you, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Thomas who, what's his last name? I don't know. Uh, he looks like that. Get him! Well, that's one found. You two wouldn't happen to know where the other one is, would you? Thanks for dinner. Delicious as always. You're welcome. My mother taught me. Yeah, he was telling me a little bit about her. She sounds like an incredible woman. She was. Oh, I wish you could have met her. So do I. Thank you for taking your time to read to my father these past few months. He's grown quite fond of you. Yeah, pleasure's been all mine. Truth be told, the Book of Mormon has changed my life. It's opened my eyes to things that I never really knew before. I'm glad. You deserve peace and happiness in your life, Thomas. I love spending time with you and your family, Grace. I really do. Well, you're the first guy I've met who hasn't gone running at the first sight of Jocelyn. The only direction I want to be running is towards you. As usual, you're supposed to be getting ready for bed, young lady. I know, but I just wanted to say goodnight again. <laughs> Good night, Joss. Good night, Thomas. I'll see you two first thing in the morning. Breakfast? Yeah, I'd like that. Night. Night. Fancy seeing you here. Drag him. This way. Coward. 
Well, look what the cat dragged in. I will kill you, Dimitri. I will kill you for this! Really? <laughs> How are you going to do that when I'm holding the gun? Hmm? Say goodnight. Please stop! I didn't want this. You were the one who turned him in. I seem to recall something about uh, wanting Thomas out of the picture. I know I said that, but I didn't mean it. I did not like this. OK, Thomas, I'm sorry. Does anyone else have anything else to say? Chris. Thomas. Chris. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. None of this is your fault. How sweet. <laughs> Brotherly love at its finest. You've made your point. They're not going to tell anyone. They haven't yet. Do I end up like him? Any last words? <gasps> My father in heaven. I know you're here and answer prayers. Shut up. Please help us, God. Stop doing that! There is no God. Please help us. Please help us. Ah! Trust God! Trust me when I say I'm in a much better position and a much better shot. <laughs> you don't have the guts. Try me. Put the gun down and get on the ground. Now! Next time I won't be so generous. Put him down, we're not gonna tell you again. seen better days, but I'll be all right. Where's Chris? Is he OK? He's fine. He's in the guest room. My father hired a nurse to watch after him. He's OK. OK. Thank you. What about Dimitri? What happened to him? He's dead. My father shot him after he tried to kill you. He saved your life. And the others are going to spend the rest of their lives in jail, where they belong. And Blake? He didn't make it. I'm sorry I brought this on your family. I'm ashamed. I don't know how I'll ever face your father. He's more forgiving than you think. Everything will be fine. How's he doing? Not well. He doesn't have long. I'm sorry, Grace. Chicken noodle soup. Well, thank you, Joss. You're welcome. Why don't you try a bite? Yeah, I will. You like it? Mmm. It's delicious. I'm glad you're okay. Me too, Joss. Me too. You too, Mommy. I'm 
sorry I wasn't there to help you, Chris. It's over, Thomas. Dimitri's not gonna bother us anymore. No more living a life on the run. No more. This is a good place to settle down. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Scarlet liked doing cartwheels. She was very good. The problem was she couldn't stop. She did cartwheels in the kitchen. She did cartwheels at the grocery store. She did cartwheels at the library. I love it when you read to me, sweet pea. Thank you. I love you, Grandpa. I love you, my angel. My girls, my precious girls. I love you so much, Daddy. I love you too. Where's Thomas? I'd like to see you. I'll go get him. His vital signs are back to normal. The concussion is mild. So a few more days in the bed resting. He should be back on his feet in no time. That's great news. Yeah. I'm gonna go pack my things. My job is done. Reach out if you need us. And best of luck. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're not interrupting. This is your home. We're grateful to be here. Yes, thank you. You're welcome, and I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better. What is it, Grace? My father wants to see you. It's urgent. Of course, right away. I'll be right back. Jos, I owe you my life. I'm so sorry for what happened, for bringing this chaos to your life and endangering your family. That's all behind us now. I'm proud of the changes you've made. You have a whole new life ahead of you. Is there anything I can do for you, sir? Yes, there is, actually. You can read to me one more time, if you don't mind. Of course, Jos. We finished the book last time I was here. Um, what chapter would you like to hear again? Not that book. My wife's journal is in the drawer. Take it. Open it to the last page. You'll find two photographs there. Yes, it is. 
It's when we're young and so in love. But we didn't know how much our love would grow and how deep and rich it would become. It's such sweet memories. Families are forever. I want you all to remember that. You can turn to the last page. She left a message for me before she died. Would you please read it? My dearest Josiah, I find myself in a strange place where I can remember everything that has been going on and everything you and I have been through. I cherish these rare moments of clarity. I know I don't have a lot of time, so this will be short. Please tell Grace and Jocelyn that I love them with all my heart and that I'll always be close and watching that they are the best thing that could ever have happened in my life alongside of you. Go on. I know these things have been hard for you. I'm sure you have felt as if I have abandoned and forgotten you. But know that as my memories slip away, my love for you will never fade, and eternity will be ours for the taking. I'll be waiting on the other side, my love. Yours truly, Maddie. Jos. Jos. father wanted you to have this. He wrote it a few weeks before he passed. My dearest Thomas, forgive my handwriting. My eyesight continues to fail me and my hand won't stop shaking. But I wanted to remind you one last time how much I treasured our time together. You have become like a son to me. Hearing you read the Book of Mormon out loud did my heart good, as I know it did yours. I want you to have it. The knowledge it contains saved my soul and gave my life direction and purpose. God has given you a second chance. He loves you as does his son, Jesus Christ. Take care of yourself and cherish my girls. I'll be watching until we meet again. And remember, family is forever. With love, Josiah. He left behind his Book of Mormon to me. 
and he told me to cherish his girls. Marry me, Grace. Really? I don't have a ring or any material object that I can give you, but I'll give you my love and my heart to you and Jocelyn forever. <laughs> of course I'll marry you. <laughs> my favorite scripture, it's in the book of Helaman, chapter five, verse 12. Will you read that? Yeah, absolutely. And now, my sons, remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation. And whatsoever thing persuadeth men to do good is of me, for good cometh of none, save it be of me. I am the same that leadeth men to all good. He that will not believe my words will not believe me, that I am. And he that will not believe me will not believe the Father who sent me. For behold, I am the Father, I am the light, and the life and the truth of the world. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may now kiss your bride. I think the world's about to change, but that's okay. I think we'll all be fine. I think you never know what's wrong until it's far too late. We missed the signs There's a part of me that wants to see this all fall down So we can help one another stand back up Taller this time around
So we change and we grow Cause we know this is not the end of the road And we change and we grow Cause we know this is not the end of the road And we change and we grow Cause we know this is not the end of the road And we change and we grow And we know this is not the end